On today's recipe video, I'm gonna show you how to make my easy cheesy hash brown casserole just in time for the holidays. To get started on our cheesy hash brown potato casserole, the first thing that we're gonna need to do is blend up our sauce. Now, the sauce is a recipe out of my new book, The Plant-Based Diet for Beginners. It's out for pre-order now. It's a super simple recipe. It will be below if you want to check it out there, the recipe. So, all we're gonna need is one medium cooked sweet potato. Now the recipe in the book calls to go ahead and chop it up and boil it. If you haven't had them, have, don't have them cooked already, I've got them cooked, so I'm just gonna add them whole. If you're worried that your blender might not be, say, as powerful as the Vitamix, you can always uh, peel the skin off and chop it up, but I'm just gonna put it in whole. And I have three cups of water already in the blender. You could use hot water if you've boiled the potatoes, or if you already have them cooked, just use some cold water, that's fine. And then I have one medium Yukon gold potato. We have a fourth of a cup of nutritional yeast. Where do I love to get nutritional yeast from? I really enjoy the Trader Joe's brand. Next, we have one fourth of a cup of rolled oats. Next, we have one tablespoon of lemon juice. If you don't have lemon juice around, you could really use any sort of acidic liquid, something like a balsamic vinegar or a apple cider vinegar, but lemon juice is my preferred way to go. And then we have our spices, super easy, super simple. We have two teaspoons of garlic powder, two teaspoons of onion powder, and one teaspoon of smoked paprika. And that is it for our cheese sauce. Now all we have to do is blend it up. I like to say three, two to four minutes for blending. I'm gonna use the Vitamix here. I've used way less power blenders in the past and gotten very similar results. So, but you just have to blend it a little quicker. It's probably gonna be around 60 seconds to a minute and a half for my Vitamix. about a minute and a half, two minutes. Our sauce is looking nice and creamy. Since we're gonna be putting it in the oven to cook, I'm not gonna blend it, blend it, blend it. If you were gonna use it right in a sauce or with some pasta right away or on potato, you might wanna heat it up in the blender to uh, just make it thicken up a bit, but it will thicken up. You can see here, got a good consistency to it. It will hold to the back of a spoon. And that's what I'm looking for. All right, next we have a nine by 14 baking dish. And this is just a Pyrex glass baking dish. And then I have two pounds of frozen potatoes. So this is just frozen shredded hash brown potatoes. I just went to my local Food Lion, Kroger, um, Walmart, most all have them. And right here in the recipe or in the ingredients, all it is is potatoes. So 100% potatoes, that's it. I'm gonna pour this in. The question I get asked a lot too is, can I use fresh potatoes? And you of course can. I just like to use frozen for this. It just makes it a little bit easier, something everybody has and uh, you don't have to go out of your way and grate a potato. The recipe that I shared for my cheesy hash brown potatoes a while ago, we used mushrooms in it, but I had a lot of people saying, well, I don't like mushrooms. Can we do something without mushrooms? And of course we can. You could use frozen broccoli or fresh broccoli, whatever you have available to you. Today, I'm gonna be doing a half and half. So I've got about six ounces of sliced mushrooms, and then I have about six ounces of frozen broccoli or any type of broccoli. Since I am going to be doing a half and half, I have another bowl and a mixing spoon here so that I can mix my mushroom bits with the, without the broccoli, so we can go half and half. So I am gonna transfer half of these potatoes into my bowl, and this is totally uh, optional. If you have a family that loves broccoli and mushrooms, feel free to add them both. So I'm gonna add my mushrooms to my bowl, and then I'm gonna add my broccoli into here, and then we're just gonna add half the cheese sauce in both sides. That looks good. You see how easy that pours down there. Nice and creamy. You saw how easy it was to make. It took what, 12 or 20 seconds? Well, it took like a minute and a half. So now let's just mix up. First, we'll mix up the mushroom bits. All 
around the side and through the middle. Shout out to Mary Berry there. Okay, our mushroom and potato and cheesy sauce looks good. Now we'll mix up our broccoli. Looks great, and it's already smelling super tasty. That cheese sauce is, 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 you know, with cooked potatoes and everything, so you could go ahead and just dip a finger in there and enjoy it. But I'm going to separate it here, half and half. Dr. Miller doesn't know that I'm making this, and so when she gets home from classes tonight, and she teaches kind of late, she's gonna be surprised with a cheesy hash brown casserole. And I'm just gonna flatten it out a bit. And now I have the oven preheated to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And I am going to bake that for right at an hour. And then we will have the option of adding some breadcrumbs on top or a gluten-free option, but that is after it has baked for the full hour. So I'm gonna add this to our oven and we'll be back in 60 minutes to see how it's turned out. Our 60 minute timer just went off. Let's go ahead and check out to see how our hash brown cheesy casserole is doing. Oh my goodness, that looks cheesy, ooey, gooey, deliciousness. I cannot wait to dive into that. Let's put this up here. Now, from here, you can 100% eat it like it is. It's gonna be delicious, it's gonna be a fan favorite, but to take it over the top, we have half a cup of breadcrumbs. These are just organic breadcrumbs. You can also, if you're gluten-free, you can get rice breadcrumbs that are made by puffed rice that have been blitzed up to bake breadcrumbs. That works perfectly too, but all we need to do is just layer it on there. We want a pretty good coverage. I'm doing it so well, I may not even need to use my spoon. And I don't think I'm gonna need to. Normally I kinda toss it on there. Now, we're going to set it. We've got, we're gonna turn the oven to the broiler setting. So we're gonna set it right underneath that broiler and just set it till those breadcrumbs crisp up and turn nice in a golden brown. So, oop, our broiler is ready. So let's go ahead and set it another a few minutes. That is looking and smelling perfectly done. Oh, that was about 90 seconds underneath the broiler. That is just screaming a must make for the holidays. If you, can, if you ask me, uh, I think this one is definitely going to make it onto our Thanksgiving dinner table, as well as hopefully many others dinner tables as well. So from here, we can just slice it up and give it a try like I'm gonna do. Oh, oh, oh. look at that. Ooey, gooey, cheesy deliciousness. That was from the mushroom side. Remember we did half and half. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a try. Maybe just with my big spoon here. That is out of this world. If you bring it out of the oven, you're gonna to wanna to set it to the side there, let it cool down for maybe 30 minutes, and that's gonna help thicken it up as well. You can see it didn't maybe slice up into a, uh, holding a piece that would hold together. If I were to set that out on the countertop to cool for 30, 45 minutes, it's gonna to homogenize together and it will slice up nice and easily, but you could eat it fresh like this and I don't think anybody's gonna have a worry with that. Next question is, Gabriel, there was no salt in this recipe. What should we do? Well, if you need some salt, sprinkle some salt on. I don't use any salt in my recipes because the salt, I could have added a couple teaspoons of salt in this recipe, but it gets dissipated as it cooks, and then you have to add more salt on just layering on the sodium. So if you need some salt, go ahead and sprinkle some salt on the top. If you don't, eat it just as it is. That is my easy, cheesy hash brown potato casserole. I really hope you all enjoyed it. Remember, the Anytime Cheese Sauce that I used is found in my new book, The Plant-Based Diet for Beginners. It is on page 127. The book is available for pre-order. The paperback ships December 10th. It's available for pre-order. The Kindle version is also available for pre-order, and that ships out 
electronically at the end of November. I really hope you all enjoyed today's recipe video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, a like, make sure to share this, tag someone you think could use this recipe this holiday season or could really utilize the handbook that I wish I would have had when I was getting on a plant-based diet and I wish I would have had as I was helping my family, my mom, dad, sister, cousins, grandparents, adopting a plant-based diet themselves. And I've written it. It's all here. You have a third of the book. Uh, to, uh, the first third of the book is going to be, what is a plant-based diet? How can it help you? And then we get into the recipes, the starches, the simple starches, how to prepare the basics, all the great recipes that many similar ones that you've seen on the website here on this channel and many more new ones that we're going to be introducing in the book. I am Plant-Based Gabriel. Thank you all for watching. If you haven't heard it already today, I love you. Hope you have a wonderful day and enjoy your easy, cheesy hash brown casserole.